In this video, I'll show you how to construct an external elevator that goes up to the roof of the two-story house and allows for access to the telescope. So first I started by creating a base and a top made out of heavy chipboard. I cut two pieces of three by three inch chipboard and glued those together. And then I ended up covering them with um, this rustic looking paper, a distressed looking paper from the Cheswick line of papers. And then I uh, painted and glued around the base this fencing to serve as kind of railing for the cage of the elevator. And I'm leaving the one side open because this is the side that's going to go up along the wall and when it gets up to the top of the height, then you will be able to get out of the, of the elevator cage. And so that's the bottom and I did a kind of a faux, um, a faux gate to get in. It doesn't actually open, but it's got it's got uh, hinging and then it's got this little handle that's mounted on these two little uh, brass discs. And so, you know, you'd have to have a way to get into this. So I've, did, I've done that. And then I am doing some things to the top to accommodate uh, being able to lift the cage up to the roof. And what I'm doing is adding some pieces in order to be able to connect some chain to the top piece. And I've gone in and punched four holes in the corners here. And these are the pieces that I'm using here. And if you look on the bottom here, I use the round disc to keep the head pin from slipping through the hole that I punched. So I take the head pin and I put it through the hole that I punched and I did glue these on as well as just sliding this in place so that way it's not going to move around. So I glued that in place and then I came in here and then glued down this rondelle and then glued down this box foot and once that was dry then I clipped this and then uh, bent it to make the loop, the loops that you see here. Now that's going to accommodate four pieces of chain. And one of the things that you want to do to, you know, to make sure that it's as symmetrical as possible is face your loops all the same way. So all of my loops are facing into the center instead of having them sideways, you know, that sort of thing. So that way they're all the same. And then I will be hooking the chain and I would suggest that you use as thin a chain as possible because the the pulleys are the pulley is very small so I'm going to use this really thin chain and I'll be running a piece of chain from each loop to the center and then I'll have a jump ring in the center and I'll, I'll make this as tight as possible because I don't have that much space when you get up to the top of the mechanism that's going to lift this and you want the elevator to be able to go as far up as you can and so if you've got a bunch of chain dangling down then the elevator isn't going to come up as far as possible now, in order to support the two pieces, put them together, I will also, I'll mention too, I'm gonna to be, I'm going to be uh, covering this with railing and I'll, I'll, I'll show you a picture of that in a minute. And then um, I need some supports and what I did is took some wooden dowels and I, mine measure six inches. And I just had these little, I don't even know what you call them. They've got kind of a thread on one side and they're open on the other. And they were just something that would work nicely as a nice base to glue the, um, the wooden dowel in. So I will be gluing each of four of these in each corner, and that will be my supports. And then this will go on top. So that will go on top. And I'll have all my, all my, um, my chain and then of course all of the railing at the top too just to kind of dress it up and make it look a little fancier. Now you can see the finished version of the cage. I've got all of the fencing that I'm using to uh, go around it in place on the top and the bottom and you're seeing kind of a corner view so you can get an idea of the decorative elements. And then now the next view is of the cage against the wall like it would be to pull it up. 
And then the uh, next image is the blank op or open side. And uh, that's the side that's going to face the wall and be open to the roof when the cage goes up. And then you can see that I've also added this little light. I thought that kind of gave it a little bit more of a steampunk feel. And uh, it's just a miniature bulb and I attached it using the same supports that I used for the whole cage. Um, then you can finally see the top of the cage where I've run the, the um, chain. And I did end up using a different chain going up to the uh, pulley. You can see the chain I originally talked about. I've used that to connect everything to a jump ring and then that gold chain. I found out when I wound it up that it was still just a little bit too thick and so I ended up using an even finer chain and that's what the gold chain is. Now this is going to be the mechanism that sits on the roof and here's the pulley that I'll use to uh, wrap up the chain to pull the elevator cage up. And I've made this using uh, L brackets. There's two L brackets here and then another two here. And then I have just two metal plates here and then attach the pulley here. And then the way this is gonna sit on the roof is it's gonna sit like this. And then um, I'm going to wait until everything is put together to determine exactly where to mount this because I do have some flexibility in where I mount this. I can use the first hole, the second hole, both holes. And so I think if you wait till you have the whole thing assembled and then make your final decision about where this is going to hang, that makes the most sense. Now, I'm, this is going to look a little nicer than it does. I've just got some, you know, screws odds and ends just to put it together just to give you an idea and to, to make sure that I thought the concept would work. Now in terms of the pulley, the pulley is not, it doesn't come apart or it's not, I don't think it's not really meant to come apart. And so you got a couple of choices here. I thought, I thought it would be nice if you had a crank and you could just crank it and, and it would, you know, start to, to lift the, the chain. Um, you can do that. It takes a little bit more work or you can just leave it like it is and at, if you want to raise up the elevator, just start moving your wheel and when you get it, the chain up as far as you want, just stick something in it to lock it in place and then it's, it'll stay there. But what I did is I experimented with tearing this thing apart and I found out it wasn't that bad. Um, in order to, to add something to this to make it actually turn, the wheel has to be attached and glued to the bar that's in the middle and right now it's not. And so you've got to get in there. And I took just this, this uh, little tool here. I, I went in here and basically, let me get in there a little farther. I don't know if you can see. I'm going on the inside of this bar and this little nut or whatever it is. And I just kind of started pulling it apart. I don't know if you could see, I've created a gap. Let me see if I can do it. I'm basically making the this prong thing pull apart. And in this is a, I'll do it to the other side too. Slip this in, do the same thing. And out comes this pin and this pin. And now this is free. So once it's free, then you can come in and add your own um, your own rod, and I've just used a piece of clock part, and it's just kind of it's it's not even on each side. There's you know it's it's just a piece of of uh, a rod of metal uh, with some ends on it, and then this little piece on it. And so what you can do now is put some glue inside your wheel, put your wheel back here take whatever you're going to use as a rod and it could be it could be a wooden skewer it's whatever you have and and glue that rod to the wheel but don't glue it to either one of these things so you just want the rod glued to the wheel so you want, probably want to find a rod that that fits this snugly so that it it'll stay in place and so that's what mine does it fits it snugly and then I thought just to make it a little bit more like 
you know, something you turn, I'm adding these little clock parts. These are the winders for uh, watches. I'm going to add these to the ends. I'm going to glue them in place. I've got two of them here. So I'm going to glue one on this end and glue one on this end. And then it'll actually look like something that, you know, you would use. This one's a little snugger that you would actually use to turn. So that's how I'm going to do it. Like I said, you don't have to take this apart. You can just, with your finger, do this, and then when you get it in place, put a rod in. Now, even with doing this, having this little thing to turn and controlling the wheel that way, I still, once I get the, um, the elevator up as high as I want, I'm still going to have to put something in there to keep it from slipping back. So I will just have a little, another little rod handy, or I can even use the one that's here and just stick that in place and keep it from, from sliding down and uh, unwinding again. Here's a view of the support mechanism, and I ended up uh, changing the color so that the uh, L brackets matched the um, aged looking uh, plates that I was using. And to do this, I used a combination of two different patina paints. And these are paints, you've heard me talk about them before, They're, they work well on metal. And so one of these was an aged bronze and the other was a Victorian gold. And so I kind of used a combination of the two. And then I used the Annie Sloan Soft Wax, the dark color. This is the same stuff I used in the boudoir in antiquing the furniture in that. And that kind of gave me the darker bits that you see um, on the metal. And then to mount them on the roof, you can see that I ended up mounting both holes, using both holes of the bracket. That... By using both, I, I had plenty of room um, for the pulley to be out far enough for the cage to come up in the right place. And to mount those, I used just some brass uh, bolts and nuts and poked holes through the roof and then used the nut on the other end and that kept it in place nicely. And then for the other holes to attach the L brackets to each other and to attach the plate to the L brackets, I used these hitch fasteners and they're just more decorative. They, um, they come uh, with a screw that, that was, you know, the, the, uh, the height of the screw was enough to go through the double, um, the double thickness of both the L brackets and the plates. And I just thought that looked a little bit better than just using screws. Here you can see a side view and you can see the chain going up to the pulley. Now you want to glue um, the chain at least once around that pulley so it stays in place otherwise as you crank up the chain's just going to keep slipping and um, I thought originally about looping it around and then putting a, um, a, a, a jump ring there but no matter what I did unless I glued it it just kept slipping so I just glued one length of the chain all the way around the wheel and then now you can kind of see a top view now this is with it wound all the way to the top and you can see the chain in the pulley and as it turned out, as I was playing with this and um, getting different pictures and whatnot for the project, I ended up looping the end of the chain or the, the, the part of the chain that's close to the cage jump ring. I just looped it around the, uh, the mechanism I was using to crank it up and it, it stayed in place. So I ended up not even sticking a little rod in there to keep it from going up and down. And the same thing um, happened, you know, when I was taking pictures of it halfway up. And you can see in the picture here, all I did is I cranked it up as far as I wanted and then just looped that chain around one time. And um, that was it, it stayed in place. So I ended up not using, not using anything to, um, not using any kind of rod or anything to keep it in place. So you can think about that as an option. Now, once I crank the cage all the way to the top, the bottom of the cage is going to be level with the base of the roof, not the top of the roof. Now to get the base or the bottom of the cage all the way up to the very top of the roof, you would have to have a very tall mechanism and I thought that's going to look crazy. So my solution to the issue was to uh, have just a little staircase going up the side of the roof. And the staircase is made from the same um, stair steps that I made the uh, spiral staircase. I, if you don't, if you remember or not, but I mentioned that you can buy an extra set of these. Uh, just It's like a half set, I believe it's eight. And uh, all I did was I used those steps, I cut them in half, and I alternated which uh, side of the step I, I added. So because the, the steps are in a wedge, 
when I cut them in half, one side's still going to be fatter than the other. So say for the first step, I had the fat end on the left. The second step, I had the fat end on the right, and so back and forth. And so they kind of, they're staggered and they kind of even out all the way up. And um, I just painted them with some gold spray paint and, and another kind of brassy looking spray paint and just glued those going up the side of the, um, of the rooftop. And now you can see the cage is up there. You can walk right out, go right up those steps, and then that takes you to the top of the roof. Now, if you added lighting to the boudoir like I did, the chandelier, and you have the controls, those on and off switch and battery pack and all that on the top of the uh, ceiling uh, underneath the roof, and then you want to add the stuff that I did, uh, you know, on the top of the roof, then you're going to need access to the attic. And the way I achieved that is one of the windows on the uh, back of the roof, I instead of gluing the window in place, the round window in place, I cut a hole and I used more of the image to frame it and used a hinge and then glued that to both the window and to the uh, ceiling and then that way I can open that window up and get in and uh, turn the switches off and on and also replace the battery. This video concludes the Iron Gate Street House series of tutorials. Alpha Stamps is carrying several of the products that I used. For more information, pictures, product lists, check out my blog post. If you're watching this on YouTube, you'll find it down in the description area.